Sable is a girl who embarks on a pilgrimage of passage. Coming of age, it's now time to choose her place either within the tribe or outside of it. The choice is represented by the masks she chooses to don, each mask representing an established societal role. Climber, guardian, machinist, scrapper, so on. To earn the right to wear these masks, she must aid those who have already walked this path, reach places others can't, build and maintain machinery, collect scrap. There's nothing grand about these endeavors. They represent the day-to-day -day existence of those who make a life on these sands. Sable isn't about doing extraordinary things, it's about doing ordinary things in an extraordinary place. Sable's world is ruined, but it is still full of beauty. Its desert regions are loosely divided by their topography and their features. Endless rolling sand dunes, towering mesas, salt flats, graveyards of bone and steel. In all this emptiness and desolation, there is serenity and splendor. Every new landmark stands so alone, like an installation at a gallery. All of the noise and space around it has been cleared to focus your attention on the subject. You view it from different angles to take it all in. You move in close to observe its finer details. When you feel like you have a grasp of the story it's trying to tell, you move on to the next one. Exploring the stories of each of these landmarks is as important as exploring the structures themselves. The land has played host to so many visitors, both terrestrial and interstellar, and what they've left behind is all that remains of their story. Their ruined spaceships, their crumbling architecture, their bones, their towering colossi. Each of these things represents a puzzle for the player to solve. How can I climb that thing? How can I unlock that door? But as you solve these puzzles, you're constantly turning over in your own mind why any of this exists in the first place. Who built this mighty sundial and for what purpose? Was this sandworm ever alive? Or is it still alive? What did these otherworldly visitors come to this planet for and what cast them from the sky? Some of the answers you'll receive, but many you won't, leaving space for your imagination and curiosity to fill the blanks. Part of Sable is curiosity. When you are sent out into the world to begin your pilgrimage, you are pointed to a nearby town and that is all the guidance you get. There, you'll meet people who will send you to places, but this directed activity represents only a small portion of what Sable is about. Most of it is the curiosity-driven exploration that is all but absent in modern video games. Sable isn't about your quest log or your checklist, it's about what's over there, over that hill, on that distant horizon, at the top of that mountain peak, at the bottom of that cave. You push forward into most of Sable, having no clue at all what you're moving toward. Usually, there's something. Sometimes there's nothing, but even when there was nothing, I never once felt like a single second of my time had been wasted. The tick box, the MacGuffin, the progression, none of that ever mattered to me. How often do you completely disconnect from the objectives and reward systems that a game builds for you and just play, wander, explore, see? That disconnection rarely happens, but it happens here in Sable. There is no point in me attempting to describe Sable's stunning art style to you. You can see it here for yourself. I will say though that the color you see is not as constant as this video might suggest. There is a day and night cycle at work that radically transforms everything. The oranges and yellows and reds that dominate the landscape will sink into sullen blues and purples, eventually settling into a washed out grey. When this happens, everything is reduced to almost wireframe. The black lines that separate colour become the predominant visual feature. Nighttime feels starved, as though the world was unfairly denied the colour that nourishes it. I remember disliking this at first because it seemed like such a waste. Later on though, I came to realise that darkness made me appreciate the game's colour more because it was fleeting. 
When I chanced upon a new monument in broad daylight, I was thankful that I arrived there in the daylight hours because it would let me see it in all its glory. When I arrived somewhere else at night, I imagined what it would look like when the sun did come up. Sometimes I would stay and wait just to see, and that patience was always rewarded. Sable follows in the rich tradition of sensory and exploratory games like Journey, Abzu, and Gris. The difference, though, is in how unscripted Sable is. The game cannot anticipate from which direction you'll approach a structure or what time of day you'll arrive. It can't frame specific points of interest with cinematic camera angles or cue a moment in the score to precisely coincide with your actions. Sable's achievement is that it manages to achieve the same impact that its contemporaries do without ever taking control away from the player and without ever stage managing its moments. Every one of the experiences you have in Sable is wholly unique because you created them. You are always the author of your story and no two people's stories will be the same. Come Sable is out on PC and Xbox and it's available through Game Pass. It will only appeal to a very small subset of players, but I really do believe that this is some of the best open world exploration I've ever experienced. It is a truly open world and you truly explore it. Much like Outer Wilds, I think Sable has a lot to teach about open world game design and how important intrinsic motivation is within the open world formula. If you have a few hours spare, I very strongly recommend you set aside some time to play Sable. <laughs>